So hello and welcome to the computer graphics uh, practice session video. Uh, this week's task is projected chopper and uh, what we'll be doing here is we'll be uh, looking at the same hangar scene with the perspective camera but we're going to change its field of view. So previously we have had uh, the field of view fixed at 80 degrees but uh, now we're going to uh, change it uh, based on the user input. And in addition to that, we're going to use an orthographic camera uh, that will look at the chopper from uh, three different uh, places and uh, render the orthographic projection. So the difference between those is that for the perspective camera you have this point where everything is projected onto, uh, projected to, and this plane is then taken uh, from the projection. Um, so objects uh, further away would look smaller and so on, but with the orthographic uh, camera the uh, project projection is actually done uh, like uh, onto a uh, plane, so the viewer is, is, is actually this plane. So what this means uh, is that, um, well, uh, some previous uh, stuff. So what this means is that if you have some kind of a cube uh, and you want to orthographically uh, do an orthographic projection, then what this does is it kind of uh, projects the cube uh, perpendicular to this, uh, this screen here. So it will get this uh, cube on the, on the screen. Um, now, if this cube, uh, if that face there is uh, uh, directly parallel to that, uh, uh, that plane, then you only see that uh, face. So, uh, with perspective projection, you might, might see like over the cube and so on. Um, but yeah, so this is how the orthographic projection differs. Uh, also, it doesn't like matter how far away or how close your camera is. With perspective projection, it matters like if you're closer, then the cube is bigger, right? Or if you're far away, the cube is smaller. With orthographic projection, well, it will be exactly the same projection if your uh, plane is a bit further away. So it will be the same uh, cube there as well. Um, of course, there is still this near plane, far plane uh, restriction. So if you happen to go out of this range, then you still won't see the, uh, see the result. Um, okay, but um, this orthographic projection is often used like in different uh, CAD or um, engineering um, fields. So, uh, for example, like if your 3D modeler is modeling some uh, spaceship, uh, they want to uh, find out if the vertices they have added are uh, aligned with, with some uh, with each other, for example, then they often switch to orthographic projection to see like directly down onto the object or directly from the side to the object. Um, this allows them to investigate like the geometry in a more uh, straightforward way because the perspective uh, projection doesn't distort the uh, object. Uh, right. Uh, what we'll be doing is uh, having this small viewport in uh, top uh, in the bottom right corner here uh, that renders the orthographic projection from the to uh, from the front, from the top, and from the side of your chopper, uh, and it will switch uh, between those um, uh, to see uh, different uh, different uh, projections. Okay. Uh, you probably want to uh, look up GL viewport and GL, uh, GL scissor, so I've already like opened them here because we need to use those. Um, and then uh, we can open the code. So currently if you run this code, what you should see is this uh, tetrahedral uh, rotating in the center of the scene. So um, you can replace this with your uh, chopper. So uh, this. Uh, Tetrahedron is a bit, uh, maybe a bit too futuristic uh, object here. So put your chopper in the scene uh, and then there is this um, uh, draw chopper instead of draw tetrahedron uh, part and update that part of the code. But the task um, 
Uh, perhaps we should start from the uh, beginning. So we have this change secondary camera mode and also we have uh, two cameras, a main camera and a secondary camera. And now in like pure like open shell doesn't define what a what a camera is. So what I've done here is I've created this uh, struct that kind of defines a camera to be uh, a combination of the projection matrix and the view matrix. So this is uh, pretty much like what's needed. Of course, in, in 3GS, for example, a camera uh, class is much larger, has different methods, uh, caching and whatnot in it. But here, uh, this uh, should uh, suffice. So camera consists of the view matrix saying where is it located and, and how is it oriented in the workspace. Or actually, the view matrix is the inverse of that. Uh, it uh, specifies how to transform other objects into camera space. And then we have the projection matrix, which either uh, has the perspective projection or the orthographic projection uh, matrix uh, in it. And the main camera will be the perspective camera, and the secondary will be the orthographic camera. Uh, here you can init your uh, choppers and cubes. Uh, if you want, you can also refactor those into another file and always like um, include that file, um, but it's, it's totally up to you um, how you want to do this. Everything else should be the same here, uh, except this tetrahedron um, part. Um, here is the part uh, where we uh, want to change the field of view uh, of the main camera. So when there is this key press and when there is the left arrow or the right arrow that has been pressed, then uh, find the main camera uh, and calculate a new projection matrix uh, and assign it to that projection attribute of the main camera. And uh, yeah, global field of view, so there should be, there is this global value. So currently, like, if you want to decrease the field of view by one, you need to know what to decrease it from. So the uh, matrix itself uh, it would be very difficult to calculate it from there, so you can just uh, like use this variable. Uh, of course, we could have it inside this uh, struct, but then the orthographic uh, camera would, wouldn't need it, and then it would be bad. So change that, find the new perspective matrix, and assign it. And here is the change the secondary camera mode part, so this will change the orthographic projection. Projection itself actually stays the same, but will be modifying the view matrix of the secondary camera. And uh, what this uh, view matrix, well, the um, uh, look at command from the GLMAT library creates this view matrix, and it needs a position, uh, a look at point, and an up vector. Now, what is this up vector? Uh, this is, um, we'll see this in the lecture as well. But it's, uh, it's quite important in the sense that if you have a camera somewhere, its position is fixed, so you know where is it located, you know what uh, is it looking at, so some other point, maybe your uh, chopper is there. Uh, so, uh, but uh, with only those two parameters, it can still kind of uh, have a role around this axis, so which uh, how is, it, how is it oriented when it's looking at this point? And that's loose. Uh, in order to like, fix this, you need this uh, up vector that specifies kind of this uh, general direction of up. So, for example, like I would say that this is my up vector, and it will, um, we will see this in the lecture, it will calculate the uh, correct like, perpendicular uh, coordinate system from those parameters. And this particular coordinate system, the basis vectors are actually what we need in the layer map, and what, uh, uh, what the look at command does. Uh, but uh, if you have a camera that's uh, looking down, uh, for example, uh, directly down, so if you like, don't think about the up vector and leave it again this uh, 0, 1, 0, then in this case, uh, this would be a problem because it doesn't specify how this camera is oriented. Like it, it, it's, uh, it, it can still roll and it, it, this doesn't restrict the uh, 
um, the, the system here. So uh, if you put this uh, as the operator everywhere, then you will probably like get either a black screen or, a, or some kind of a problem. Um, like in 3GS, for example, there is this uh, small fail-safe uh, programmed into the, the library that if this case happens, that the up vector is parallel to this uh, lookup vector, and it will shift this up vector a bit in, I think, in, in, in X or in. But this is like this fail-safe uh, hack, so you should always like, think uh, how your camera is actually rotated. For example, like if it's looking uh, down onto the chopper, we want the chopper to be like uh, this way, we want the chopper to be uh, this way, uh, or like here is the uh, chopper like front uh, that way, or is the front that way. So uh, try to figure out uh, what do you actually want to achieve, what uh, view do you want to achieve, and put the correct up vector here. So maybe here the up vector would be uh, a vector like coming uh, this way, or maybe going that way, or this way. It kind of depends what do you want to uh, achieve here. Okay. And uh, so find the correct uh, view uh, matrices for different cameras in this place. And uh, yeah, so this is the initial values uh, that are being set up. And now we're getting to this uh, scissor test and the viewport. So uh, in this uh, loop, uh, we actually need to specify a secondary, a second viewport and then uh, use this uh, scissor test. So it kind of uh, has instructions here. Uh, for example, we can see uh, if we would use the secondary uh, camera, uh, secondary camera's projection matrix and view matrix here uh, currently. Then what happens is that we will get this uh, stretched out tetrahedron because the uh, orthographic uh, projection is currently uh, like a square, but our viewport here uh, is not like the full viewport. And this isn't even uh, like what we want. Uh, what we want, uh, of course, we do want at some point, um, we want the uh, like, uh, main camera and secondary camera, uh, we want to use the uh, secondary uh, camera's projection secondary camera's view and we want to draw the scene again uh, from the secondary camera's uh, point of view uh, but for this we need to use the GL viewport command uh, and specify for example so if we go and see uh, what the GL uh, viewport command needs it needs an X coordinate, Y coordinate, Y and height so the lower left corner of the viewport uh, initial value is 0, 0, uh, white and height of the viewport, so um, let's put 0, 0, 150, 150, and uh, let's see what happens, so anything can happen. And so the result we get is this, uh, and uh, you can see that this is a nice uh, square, uh, we have this tetrahedron with orthographic projection here, of course, it's a bit like uh, hard to understand. Like, is this the orthographic projection? Um, if you have a chopper here, then it's probably more visible. But the problem we have here is that everything else is black. Uh, so we have specified a smaller viewport inside our window, uh, but the second uh, draw scene uh, kind of overwrote all of the other pixels um, we had from the previous uh, draw call. So, in order to uh, keep the previous pixels, what we need to do uh, is call this uh, GL uh, scissor. So, this will set up the, the scissor box, it will set up the scissor test, and we'll use currently other, uh, the same uh, values here. And um, the scissor test is enabled at this point, and now I'm wondering, like, if we're going to build this, uh, what will happen? So uh, <laughs> it's kind of an interesting uh, story. So it's it's uh, flickering. 
So uh, there is some values there, but um, we can see that there is a, a problem here. So let's uh, look over what we're actually doing. So at this point we are setting the viewport and the scissor test, um, but we are not setting it for the main camera. So what we want to do is kind of set this um, uh, here. So uh, we have variables screen uh, white and screen height. So let's put those um, here. Uh, and now uh, this should um, apply, uh, this should uh, make uh, the main camera draw on the entire screen and clear uh, the colors and depths uh, inside the entire screen. After we have drawn uh, in, onto the entire screen, we then uh, specify uh, a smaller area. And uh, I think we also need to then uh, clear the color and depth uh, from the smaller area that we're going to start drawing onto and then draw the scene. Uh, if we don't do that, Let's see if, um, okay, currently it seems uh, kind of okay, but uh, there might be, uh, might be a problem uh, later on. So if there would be something um, uh, in front of, uh, somehow in front of the uh, small area here. And uh, this is uh, the result that uh, kind of, uh, that you can achieve. So, uh, what you want to do now is make sure this is in the right corner and not in the left corner. So specify your own um, values here and also uh, try to make it so that uh, if uh, the screen white is defined uh, a different value, so if I define 100 and, uh, 1200 here, then your uh, small viewport would still be in the uh, right corner. So uh, it's uh, often good practice to, if you have some numbers that depend on other numbers, then write that dependency in the code. Have the computer calculate that dependency because if your original number changes, then you want your code to still uh, work out. And yeah, so follow the instructions and uh, hope you enjoy this task. Um, before uh, I end this video, I also want to like um, also need to uh, uh, direct attention to this question. So uh, in some of the tasks, there are those questions. So what happens if the field of view of the perspective camera is uh, too big or too small? So less than a zero degrees or more than 180 degrees. So um, to answer this uh, together with your solution. Um, you can say like what happens when it's zero or when it's 180, but the question is if it's uh, smaller or larger. And uh, if you have implemented the part where your key presses change the field of view, then you can quite easily uh, test this out, like what happens, but uh, now uh, explain why. And uh, to, in order to explain this, I recommend you to go like under materials, so or you might remember this from the lecture as well. If you look at the perspective uh, projection matrix here, then this alpha is the field of view and something is happening with those two values. Uh, try to figure out what is happening with those two values and what do those two values on the diagonal actually do. So if you don't remember what the values on the diagonal do, then go over the geometry and transformations part again and from here uh, you can see that uh, if there are values on the diagonal and the rest are zero then they are scale coefficient, coefficients. Uh, do keep in mind that the others need to be zero because well, the rotation matrix also has values on the diagonal but uh, there are values on the other elements as well. So in the perspective matrix you can see that the, um, that the rest actually are zero, so something uh, something happens uh, with this part. So figure this out and uh, write this in the comments um, part of your solution and uh, have fun.